Sometimes during retouching, you find out that your image is becoming too smooth. In today's video, you are going to be looking at how we can create and add texture to our images in Adobe Photoshop. This is Twisted Creative. I'll be my name. If it's your first time on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not only by hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Without wasting much time, let's jump into it. Like as you can see, this image has lost textures during retouching. And how can we replace these details? We can replace it by creating these textures. Because we lost textures here, we are going to create textures and fit to this image to make it more realistic. Then we are going to be starting by clicking this box here to create an empty layer. Then after which we go to edit, fill. So in this dialog box, you have to change the content to 50% gray. Then your mode should be at normal. Then opacity should be at 100. Then you hit OK. Then we'll go to this gray layer and right click on this gray layer and choose convert to smart object. We are converting this to smart object so as to go back and make changes later. That is working non-destructively. We'll go to filter, then we'll choose filter gallery. So as you can see, we have a lot and lot of filters here. We have to choose this last one. Then if you check the first box here, you click and you have a drop down, you see texturizer, then choose texturizer. Then the texture itself, you have to change it to sandstone, not bricks, not canvas, sandstone. Then if you go to the, the scaling, you can scale from left to right. Dragging the slider from left to right will, will increase or reduce the size of the, the textures. We have to look for what is going to suit our image. But for my image, I believe my image is bold enough to handle like 100. It shouldn't be specific. Just try and see what suits your image. Don't allow it to be too big nor too small. So we have to choose something like 100 for my image. So and hit OK. Then the scaling at 100 is OK. Then the relief. If you drag the relief slider down, you will notice that it's becoming smooth. Our image is smooth already and we don't want it to be smooth. We want a kind of the spores on the face to be showing. So we have to pick it up to, I think like 16 is okay. 16 is okay. Let's just say okay. Then another important aspect of it is that the light direction is very, very important. The light direction has to make this stuff a 3D stuff so that it's not going to be looking flat on the image. So we are going to choose whether the light is coming from the left, the right, or from the top. So we have to choose if the light is coming from button, button left. For my image, I believe it's coming from top right. So I hit OK. So this is what we have here. We can still go back and make adjustments later. That is why we are on smart objects, non-destructive way. We have to change the blend mode to overlay. <laughs> Is it not amazing already? So look at what we are seeing here, a kind of skin texture, but it's looking rough anyway. So what we have to do now, because it's, it's looking too sharp, we have to reduce the sharpness by adding a little blur. Then we'll go to filter, blur, then Gaussian blur. I think you can stay between two and one. Like two is looking too smooth. Then one is a kind of, a kind of manageable, but I'm still seeing it as is. I'm seeing it as something that is too smooth. I can still take it down to like, let's say 0 0.6 or 0 0.8. Let's say 0 0.8 should be okay. Then I hit okay. Then the next thing we do here, because we, we don't want it everywhere, we just want it to the areas where the skin texture is needed. That's where we are going to place them. So how can we do that? We select the layer marks, then use our control I to invert. If you don't know anything about layer masks, you have to watch this video here to have a little idea of how layer masks can be used. So like, let me briefly explain how layer mask works. If you have it black like this, like initially it was when I use Ctrl I 
it was like this. It was looking white. White shows your effect. White shows what is on top. White shows anything, reveals. Then black, when it is black, if you use your control I again, you notice that the effect we just placed on it is now hidden. That means something like under, it is hidden under this image, which we are going to be using our brush tool to paint it out. It starts black now. We'll pick our brush tool, take a look at the foreground and the background here. The foreground must be white and the background must be black before you can use the brush tool to reveal what is underneath. If you want to toggle between this white and this black here, background color and foreground color, use your X to toggle between background and foreground color. So you have to make sure your foreground is white so as you can paint out what is hidden here. So we are going to be starting by, I think, 40% opacity or there about, let's say 40% opacity then 40 percent flow then we start painting on those smooth areas those smooth areas that we don't want that smooth we want it to be a little bit rough and we have that texture so this is what we are going to get so you have to click around the area you have to paint around the areas you want this effect on Isn't it amazing? You can see how natural it's looking. So realistic. Now, as you can see, despite the smoothness of the image, the image is still smooth, but we still have the textures intact. Got the forehead can increase the size of your brush to be faster. So as you can see, we are done. But I'm not supposed to do this area, but let's just do it. It's part of the job, it's part of the tutorial. So we'll have it like this. So taking a look at it now, you notice that a great job has been done here. You see the textures. Let's see before and after. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. So isn't that amazing? Of course it is. So as you can see, it's done. I think that is it for today. And it's easy, isn't it? If you find it interesting, helpful, and useful, hit that like button. And also leave a comment below telling us where it has helped, where it has not, and the area we need to improve on. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not only by hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Thanks for watching today's video, Creative People. Keep on creating. Please stay creative. Continue creating. See you in the next video. Bye for now.